and the information for oh, the public schools. A, f a poster and various uh, papers for which explain each of the uh, specialized. Uh, this uh, logo, of course, was done by an Arts Package student. Neither have you seen this lately? Oh, that logo? Yeah, yeah it comes yeah. up everywhere. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. A student did that. I, f I forget who it was, Janice. Graham do you remember? It was Graham. Mm. I got a story about Graham. He was the one of the originals. One of the originals. Yeah. I got a story. You, you got a, this is another one of those things you just don't forget. He was one of the originals, the first interview. He came to the interview with his parents. I was on the interview panel at that point, on that one that had him. And his parents said, I don't even know why I'm here. They said, I, he dragged us here. He, he made us come. We don't even know what this is about. They didn't say it quite as flippantly as I am, but it, that was the basic message, right? And uh, so we proceeded with the interview, and they were sort of, as good parents are, a little reserved. This is something new. Do we really want this? You know, they were, they were taking a sort of a laid-back approach to it. And then at the end of the interview, I'd, I'd gotten to know Graham at this point, and I said to him, okay, I said, I'll bet you a Coke that he's going to be in the program next year. They said, okay. And then they went on their way. First week of school, Graham was in the class. During the first week, at some point, he comes in the class with a Coke. <laughs> this, this is from my parents. So, Ray, carry on. Any, anything to add? Uh, I, I think we're all very <coughs> pleased with the, the way the initial program has succeeded and carried on, as, as mm -hmm. Will said earlier. Uh, despite cutbacks in arts programs all over the province, despite the uh, dropping of, of the grade 13 year mm -hmm. and everything else, all of those pressures, and yet it still survived. And, and I'd like to think it survived for two reasons. First of all, the quality of the students that it's attracted and maintained, and the quality of the faculty that have uh, succeeded us and, and carried on with the program. I think it, it's been a, a marvelous uh, testament to both of those groups of people working together. And I want to come back to the phrase I used earlier in, in when we were talking here, and I said, it really is a question of kindred spirits, both within the <coughs> faculty and the students. And not only within those two groups, but between those two groups as well. Yeah, okay. Well, surely you have nothing to add to that. Well, the, the only thing I would like to add is that uh, today, and for the past years when I've been away from Eastwood, I've seen results of the arts program in action. And I belong to a retired businessmen's club that uh, brings in uh, choirs from various high schools. And for the last two years, we've had the choir from Eastwood come in and it's just amazing the reaction of the uh, the people at that uh, Christmas celebration to the uh, the work of the students, and we see it at the center in the square when uh, Eastwood groups appear there. And I say to myself, by golly, the spirit of Eastwood certainly lives on, and it's living on here through the arts. But it's also true that. The athletic prowess of the school was tied in many ways to the arts side. And this is strange to say, but uh, uh, if you talk to Don Archer, the coach of the football team, he'd tell you that music is a pretty darn important part uh, of life. And uh, the school operated well with uh, a balance between the, uh, the regular school and the, the arts program within the school. It was a, certainly a pleasure uh, to be principal of a school that was uh, doing what we thought uh, was wonders with the, uh, with the students uh, that we had. Now, mind you, there'd be tension within the school because uh, all those practices took students out of other subjects, but uh, somehow we managed to survive, and it was all worth it. But just to pick up on that, the, uh, and I think this was unique because in schools that I was aware of, <coughs> but whenever we wanted a boys chorus for any of our shows, Don Archer would assemble the football team on the floor of the gym 
and within no time flat, I had a boys' chorus, <laughs> and it was it was terrific. And and the the fellows would come afterwards, uh, almost incredible. Remember one huge individual of, of you know twice as big as I was. <laughs> at the end of a show, came up and put his arms around me and gave me a huge. You could do that in those days. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare do it today. <laughs> came up and you know, and, and had tears in his eyes and said, "What a wonderful time I've had." Again, finding out something that he didn't really know he had a hidden talent. We worked with them, and uh, that, was, that was the kind of integration and work that went on in this school. Yeah. I'm assuming it still does. John, uh, any sort well, of semi-last comments? Or? I would just like to say something about the students. One thing about them, when they were coming to your classroom, you sure knew who it was. Oh, yeah. They oh, were yeah. very lively <laughs> and, and very oh, talkative. Yeah. <laughs> and they come to you into your classroom, and after about five minutes, you let them sort of cool down. You went to work, but boy, did they ever work when, when, when they got down to work. And I would like those students to know that it was a lot of fun and a real pleasure working with them. Yeah, on that, on that note, uh, uh, people, I mean, this, other teachers, other people involved in education uh, frequently wonder what in heaven's name makes the Arts Package teacher community do what they do. Because we're talking about like thousands of hours of, of, of time that, uh, that is really not part of your job at all. It's just something you do because you want to do it. And as I say, I can't overstate the amount of time that's involved. Weekends, holidays, evenings, it's just endless. And uh, of course the answer is fairly obvious, or what you were saying. You do it because the kids are worth it. And, and you've just spent three, four hours uh, you know, of your own time doing something related to the arts with the kids, and they, they click, and it's great, and it looks beautiful, and it makes it all worth it. For you know, Roly, that was one of my concerns as principal teacher burnout. There was so much work put in by the teachers. In a sense, you, you almost had to say, you need to take a break because uh, yeah. burnout was, it was can potential. certainly be there. And uh, I was concerned as principal. And, and just to finish that one off, like I, as you know, I taught the English students. I taught the arts package students English. And, and I, I just was going through my stuff there and, and I came across this. This this is an English project. Uh, just, just look at the length of that thing. It is the entire play, Romeo and Juliet, rewritten in modern English. The entire play. In, in, in amongst the rewriting are songs, song lyrics. The, the student, her name was Sarah Heaney, last year of, of, of last, uh, the year I retired, and she gave me this as a kind of retirement gift. And everything in bold are the lyrics of a song that she either wrote or that would fit to a song that's available. Uh, and, and so, you know, when you get work like this, it's worth the extra time. And I think that's probably what, what motivates most of the arts, arts package teachers, too. Anyone have any last comments? I think it's last ta comment time, or is it? Uh, yes, I just need to switch. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> well, that's... Hey, well, why don't we cut it there? Yeah, she cut it there. She told me on the phone. Uh, do you want to say anything to Sally Hughes, Push, Push, Pushing for the Dance Program? Yes. I think that's her Oh, that's right. It's a great story. And, and Hickey. i got to mention yeah, Hickey. And yeah, and Hickey. And the other thing you said to me on the phone was um, paraprofessional money coming under the table from discretionary... Well, that's... Would that be fair to say? Well... Should it come out or not? You decide. <laughs> Well, certainly the board. I know Eli Boyce the first year slipped money under the table from his discretionary funds. I don't know.